And welcome back, everybody, to the Law and Crime Trial Network. I'll be your host for the rest of the afternoon, Rachel Stockman, and I'm pleased to say we have a special guest joining us, uh, Jeff Reinick. He's the author of In the Name of the Children, an FBI agent's relentless pursuit of the nation's worst predators. There you see it. You can buy this book on Amazon. Uh, very interesting. Jeff, you've been an FBI agent. You were. You're, you're retired now for 30 years and have been involved in many of the most high-profile, complex cases. Tell me, tell me a little bit about your background. Well, I, uh, I served 11 years here in New York City, and then my wife and I uh, chose a location that we thought would be good to bring up our family, so we ended up moving to the Sacramento area. And when I got to Sacramento, I started working uh, crimes that involved children, um, abduction, murder. The director of the FBI at the time, Louis Free, had set a new priority for the FBI to get involved with these cases. And uh, I became uh, successful. My wife, Lori, likes to say I suffered a successful career because these cases take a lot out of you. They sure do when you're dealing with the deaths, murders, brutalizations of children. Let's talk about one of your more high-profile cases, and that is of serial killer Carrie Strainer. Stainer. Stainer, I'm sorry. Yes, that's fine. Uh, he is now on death row still, correct? Correct, yes. Uh, do we have any update uh, in terms of when his execution date is? Well, I think all the executions in California have been put on hold because the delay, which is excessive in California for executing, has been determined itself to be cruel and unusual. And so I think they're working out the legal issues concerning executions. Uh, and so Kerry was accused and then convicted of killing four women between the time of February and July 1999. 1999, yes. 1999. And you were instrumental in getting a confession from him. Uh, tell us a little bit about that because I was reading part of your book and something he had a very strange and I would say disturbing request when you were interrogating him? Well, I think when it comes to, to Kerry, it's, it's important to note that his brother was Stephen Stainer, who was a national story because Stephen was abducted in 1973 and then walked out with a new victim in 1980. And so this disrupted Kerry's life. When I met Kerry, he was described to me as a witness fleeing in fear. And as he got to know me and I got to know him, he started revealing more to me. At one point, he said to me that he was the killer and he would confess, but he requested first to view child pornography. So he was trying to make a deal with you, basically, and this is all in your book. Yes. Carrie Steiner was trying to make a deal with you that I would confess to the murders, the brutal murders of these four women. Many of them were teenagers, if not all, right? Two because of them the, were, two teenage. of them were yeah. teenagers. If he could view child pornography. Yes, and I think it's important for all the viewers to note that people, men, who view child pornography, in my opinion, are likely to become offenders because it's their fantasy that they're satisfying, and at some point the visual fantasy gives way to a physical desire. Talk to me about being in that room. How many hours were you in that interrogation room with Kerry Stainer? What was his demeanor? How did you get him to confess to this? <laughs> I am known for, I, I'm not a very uh, aggressive interviewer. I enjoy people. I like to meet people, and I look in everyone for value. The only ones that I cannot find value in are ones that are described as psychopaths. But in Carrie's case, uh, he was struggling. He had a lot of emotional issues concerning his brother's abduction and then how his family was dealt with and uh, he was he he had been molested himself when he was 11 or 12 years old and I have found in my experience that if you look at the age that the offender was victimized you can almost judge the age of that offender's preferred victim mm, and in Carrie's case he had a fantasy for 11 and 12 year old girls we were thrown into, I'm sorry. And I was going to say, I, th I believe we have his mugshot. We were showing it earlier. If we can show it again. Uh, there he is. There uh, are the pictures of some of his victims. Um, he's a very good-looking guy. Yes. Uh, was that part of what made him so dangerous? The most common 
comment I hear about Kerry is that he's handsome, he's well-spoken, he's bright, and that is all correct. I think what made him dangerous was that he lived his life and he lived with a fantasy of wanting to uh, abduct and mm. murder uh, two girls and he realized they would have a guardian so his fantasy was always to abduct, have sexual interaction with the two girls and then to murder them. Yeah, very, very disturbing. But your book also details other interrogations that you were part of as well. Yes, and I like to call it interview as opposed to interrogation because <laughs> I think of interrogation as the bright light and the condescending, you know. Yes. And I like to think that I talk to people. And so, I mean, because this is very, I, I, I know that you're, uh, you were an FBI agent, but part, when you get into that room with uh, a criminal or a suspected criminal, you really have to get into their psychology and try to get them to understand where you're coming from and try to get them to open up, right? Yes. So, so you were a police officer or a law enforcement officer, but you really kind of were a psychologist as well. Yes, I'm like <laughs> the Barbara Walters of police. Yes. And I believe that everybody has value. And my goal is to identify value. And I think that a lot of these people that commit these heinous acts, if you give them the ability to feel a sense of value, they will reach for that and, mm. and do what they need to do to achieve that value. And I always explain to them that to achieve the value, you give the gift of closure to the victim family, to the victims themselves. One last question again then about Kerry Stainer. Uh, as we look at his face, you're in those room, in that room for hours and hours. Was there a moment that you had a turning point in terms of you and him connecting over something that allowed him to open up a little bit more? I think it was our connection that caused him to begin confessing in the first place. So I think he had connected with me way before the confession started. It was his idea to begin the confession. Really? Yes. And you just kind of kept it going? Yes. I knew nothing about him. I have... A very, I have a, a, an interview technique that I do where I try and approach it from three different venues. Got it. Wow. Well, very much an honor, honor to have you, Jeff Reinick, here on our program. You're the first time you've been here. We hope you can come on and comment on some of our other high-profile cases. Obviously, you know a lot about this. Again, if you're interested on Amazon, In the Name of the Children, an FBI agent's relentless pursuit of the nation's worst predators. A very interesting read. I got to read some of it last night, and it was very intriguing. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thank you, Rachel. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. We're standing by in the Jason Van Dyke murder trial. Stay with us here on Law and Crime.